Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes at us from Eliza. Hey, Brian, requesting something a little different this time. Halo of Flies by Alice Cooper. So... Just first off, I want everyone to really appreciate this album art here. I hope you're not afraid of snakes. Um, (laughs) The name of the band at the top and the name of the album at the bottom are just done in the worst handwriting. It's not typographic at all. I mean, I I guess it kind of is typographic. They're deliberately aiming for something that looks uh, like a child did it. Not to mention that there's random shifts between capitals and lowercases. Like in Alice, we have a lowercase a and then a capital L. Uh, it's just, it really caught my eye. It's, it's, I mean, it's striking as well. The black against white. Um, and then, of course, just the snake head with the tongue coming out against the solid red background. It is a very attention-grabbing uh, album art to begin with. But the uh, the font choice, so to speak, is definitely interesting. Anyways, let's dive into this and see what Alice Cooper is bringing to the table today. I don't know what I was expecting from Cooper, but this is not it. borderline surfer rock. It's got a little bit of that heavy metal, maybe a little bit of prog too. So close, it's got to be heavily inspired by some of my favorite things. That one melody line that the vocal had. Notice a distinct lack of held out notes in a guitar. 
it's a lot of either faster playing or uh, staccato ideas. the third mode that we've been in. I mean, we might be in completely different keys as well. Okay, that's a fun rhythm. And I like how this section was introduced by a previous one. The, the bass actually started playing a slick about four bars prior to the shift. Interesting crossfade.
I don't know what my expectations were for Alice Cooper. I honestly don't even know a track from the band. Alright, so they've done Schools Out and Poison. Okay, I know those two. The others here for like their most popular I don't recognize, but I Poison Poison's catchy. Ah, that's a good song. School's out for summer. Uh or forever. I don't remember how the lyric goes. That's another catchy one. This was not either of those. I'm curious when they came out. So Poison was 89, School's Out was 72, and this was 71. Okay. I'm just, um... So let's get into Killer. <laughs> uh, not Killer, that's the album. What is this track called? House of F Halo of Flies. All right, Brian, get your head in the game. <laughs> this is prog rock in a lot of ways. I can hear a little bit of uh, heavy metal in here, but I'm not sure. What was that? Black Sabbath, right? I'm trying to I'm trying to figure this track out, and I think its place in history has a lot to do with it. Uh, I'm not sure there's a lot that I could figure out just based off of uh, the music alone. All right. So Black Sabbath came out a year prior. I don't know if that's long enough to really start influencing bands, but I think that we can definitely hear a little bit of that in here um in a handful okay so here's the thing here's the thing this is why i'm having trouble with this it's a lot of different opposing ideas consistently placed against each other in a series of sections that feel nonsensical to me music is a language and this feels like like gobbledygook uh like baby talk there's individual phrases that make sense but its placement with the phrases around it in each sentence do not each of these individual sections have something that i can grab onto but how they fit in against each other and their concepts as a whole flowing from one section to another and what they're all contributing to the song in totality is nonsense to me in a lot of ways uh it feels avant-garde or i think avant-garde's cousin experimental which now that i think about it yeah we throw the word experimental around quite a bit uh and i think it kind of loses its its edge its definition at times just like avant-garde it's sort of just this umbrella term for anything that's difficult to make sense of that steps outside of the bounds of traditional composition but i think here it is 100 percent appropriate this certainly feels like a transition between some of the prog we've listened to uh, genesis and king crimson and yes um, it feels like a mix between that and what was beginning to emerge at the time with the heavy metal scene. And it doesn't quite know what it wants to do, but it does know that it wants to do a lot of things. And it does those things with skill. I'm not going to say any of the individual sections sound bad or poorly composed or anything, but they don't go together it's more of like well for instance uh, a problem i have sometimes is when i'm composing a song and i'm really in the zone really feeling the emotion and the atmosphere and i do you know a phenomenal job of capturing 
that sound and I'll save the file and come back to it the next day or a couple days down the line and I'm in a very different mental state. Maybe I'm not feeling that same way. I have a really difficult time continuing on with that idea. Sometimes I will say it's fine. I will try to find a way to transition into something I do feel like playing that is similar to it. And it will create a bit of a, a complex emotion in the track. But it never feels like it's uh, cohesive in the way that if I had just finished it on that first day. And that's what this feels like. Uh, it's a series of events that feel like they were in different headspaces for each of them. They wrote one lick and came back the next day and wrote a different lick and said, just, that's our next section. How do we transition into it? Uh, maybe we can't, so we'll just smash them together. And, and they don't... It, it forces the song to have a lack of identity, at least as far as I'm concerned. But... It brings that experimental vibe to it. And experimental music is designed not necessarily to work within the status quo, but to work outside of it. And I think they do a fantastic job at this. I've never heard anything specifically like this. I have heard songs that are very disjointed with everything in the kitchen sink thrown at it. But nothing that was specifically... Halo of Flies, not this combination of sounds. I think that's going to serve as a good enough preface before we get into this. So actually, let's dive in and check out what they are doing that makes me feel this way about it. The first thing I want to focus on is guitar rhythms. And even bass rhythms, for that matter. Um, there are several sections in here that refuse to feature any sort of held out notes on the guitar. Uh, there's a couple of moments where we do get some more elongated sections, but they tend to be a foundation for variation to be applied upon so that we can re-utilize this two-note idea, so to speak, and chop them up and put some different notes in there and eventually create a moving riff out of it. And it was really nice to hear that evolution of an idea uh, somewhere in the middle of the track. But other than that one moment, which again, like I said, was a setup for moving ideas, we never really hear the guitars hold any notes out. It's always about constant movement. If a note needs to be around for more than a beat, we're just going to strum it again. This song is a series of attacks from every instrument. Except the vocals. The vocals love to lean into notes. Uh, even notes that don't really feel like they need to be leaned into much. Uh, which is just sort of an interesting... An interesting development there. It's, uh, it, But it showcases what I think is most interesting about bands like this because you know when we talk about classical and jazz composition we're usually talking about one composer who wrote a song for a group of instruments uh, musicians to play something that's really interesting about rock and metal and a lot of modern mainstream uh well rock metal country maybe anything where there's a group of people playing instruments is that they write the music for themselves and in some cases they only write their own music the guitarist might only write the guitar part they come up with a uh, you know a sick riff and the drummer's like oh i'll play this over that now the drummer has composed their own part and the rhythm guitarist is like oh i'll play this under it and they've written their own part. Now the vocalist is like, oh, I can kind of hear this melody. I'll sing this on top of all that. And everybody has composed their own parts, which means the song has four voices coming out of it. And every voice is going to have their own tendencies and biases. In this, it's really interesting to hear that the vocalist uh, tends to, at least in this track, sing held out notes. Our guitars choose to evade held out notes. Um, I don't know if that's going to be consistent across this album or all of their works or, you know, maybe the, the guitarist changes and the music shifts entirely. And because of that, uh, you know, Alice chooses to do different vocals on top of it. 
but it's really interesting that so often in this track that the roles are divided that way where the instruments are playing constant attacks and our vocalist is holding out notes it works very well 100 percent. if you're going to divvy up roles like that separate them and vocals are usually going to have less words unless you're rapping or you're putting together a massive poem <laughs> so it makes sense for the the guitars to play more often but i'm really curious how that came about if that was personal bias or if that was just how they you know one person composed this and split it up that way which feels very natural but almost every single riff in here is crafted from that angle if it doesn't start as constant attacks how do we get there that brings us to the bass who consistently plays foundational ideas and occasionally gets a nice lick uh, there was one time that I, the lick was super important to what was going on and it actually introduced a concept we would hear later and helped us transition from one section to that bass led bass and drum section that we heard at like minute seven or something like that um but aside from that, the bass is usually its own instrument, not copying what the guitars are doing, but not doing anything other than laying down chordal structures. Um, it fits very much in the realm of jazz without the walking bass line, uh, which is an interesting route to go. It's, uh, it, it's funny because just historically, it's... Um, it's not the walking bass line that stuff like rock and roll had. Was it rock and roll? Hard rock? Mm, I think hard rock's what I'm thinking of. Where we still had some of that jazzy bass line walking. But it's not the modern bass guitar idea that we hear in more uh, modern metal and rock. Where it's just pedal tone and sometimes usually overshadowed by the guitar. It's sitting in the middle. We don't have a walking bass line, but we don't have, uh, you know, we don't have a walking bass line. It is rather static, but it's still very present in the mix. Um, so that's kind of cool. Drumming and vocals, I mean, I don't really have much to add on to either of those. Uh, the vocals held out notes, which I already mentioned, and the drums were rather in the pocket most of the time. Transitions are a big thing here. I just got done talking about one time where a bass foreshadowed a concept that it would be a lead idea in the next section and allowed the two elements to feel uh, related as a sort, but as far as transitioning between them, it was still the band plays up to this point, the band cuts out, and the bass continues what it was doing. It's not a smooth transition. It's primarily a transition of smashing two ideas together. Everything else kind of went with that as well. Uh, there was a weird cross fade between toms and a snare drum. That was interesting because uh, that doesn't feel like it would be physically possible. That was completely on the production side. Um, but most of it is just smashing. We don't get any uh, crossfades or smooth transitions, fade outs into fade ins. Um, a lot of it is just we were doing this, now we're doing this. And that does not help at all with the song feeling disconnected for me. Now, here's the other thing, though, that really stands out to me is keys or mode shifts. They are frequent and all over the place and they cause so many of the sections of the songs to have different identities we have heavier gloomier chords that kind of give me that uh, that heavy metal vibe kind of make me think of stuff like black sabbath they were very rarely used compared to the rest though uh, we have brighter prog rock chords going on we also have some uh, surf rock ideas that pop up and frequently, well not frequently, I think it was twice, we went to something that was close to uh, the Phrygian or the Persian, Phrygian mode or Persian scale uh, that kind of gave it that Middle Eastern vibe. And none of these really mesh. <laughs> They're all approaching very different vibes and feelings and emotions and atmospheres and they just smash them together because the riff sounds cool and that's what I want to play next which 
it just doesn't work for me. It's, I just, I don't, I have this problem with a lot of experimental music. The point is to be different. And this is very different. It combines, I mean, I would never, never in a million years put the Phrygian mode back to back with uh, surf rock. I don't know what mode or, or key surf rock utilizes, but it has a very distinct sound. I think we can all identify it. Um, and just putting those back to back feels weird. And then to mesh that with prog rock chords that are kind of bright and uh, spicy. And what does any of it mean? What is the purpose of any of this? Um, it, it just wholly lacks identity. There is one cool thing that ties into this, but I think is pretty neat for the time period, and that is a synthesizer, maybe? I'm still not entirely up to snuff with uh, technology from 1971. 1971. So I don't know what was possible at the time, how they crafted this, but there are two or three electronic tones that we hear throughout this track that are very cool. I like their inclusion. I like the way that the texture meshes against what everything else is doing. It provides a nice variety to the overall sound and gives some of these sections even more of a sonic identity difference from others. Really leaning into that idea of just shifting identities completely between these sections. But I don't ever know how or why it fits. Again, uh, it's cool. And I think, okay, so, I, okay, uh, I'm coming on something here. This is how I feel about the song as a whole. It is cool. I enjoyed listening to all these sounds. I've never heard anything like it before. And as I've mentioned many times, anything that pushes my musical boundaries into places that I've never heard and shows me new ways that music can exist, I am down for. But would I listen to this again on my own? I don't know. Casually, no. I did not enjoy this. Uh, curiosity, though, maybe. Just, just maybe a second time just to see if I miss something, to see if it clicks, uh, you know, on, on, on a second listen. But none of it makes sense to me on a first. And I appreciate what it's doing. I appreciate it as a work of art that pushes the boundaries of the art form I don't appreciate it as a song. And I hope that distinction is, is, is meaningful and clear. I don't know if I can put it into words, the difference between art and a song. <laughs> um, but that's where I'm sitting on this. And where I'm sitting on even some of the ideas in the track is that they're neat and interesting, but not good to my ears and that's not to say that they're not good ideas it's not to say that if you enjoy them you're enjoying music wrong or you don't know how to listen to it I just didn't like a lot of what was going on it was very abrasive to me in a lot of manners and didn't make a lot of sense like I like I mentioned it's like reading a language and maybe knowing some of the words, but the sentence itself doesn't ever quite make sense. And maybe just becoming more familiar with the language would help with that. Maybe the more I listen to Alice Cooper, maybe even specifically this album, the song might make more sense to me. But right now, it's it's just very... ad ends with itself. I want to hear some lyrics. Pull this up real quick. Uh, what is this called? Halo of... I don't know why I cannot remember. That is just not a memorable title for me. <laughs> I think I've forgotten it twice now. All right. What do we got here? We got uh, three verses and a bridge between them. Uh, verse, verse, bridge, verse. I've got the answers to all your questions. If you've got the money to pay me in gold, I will be living in old Monte Carlo and you'll be reading the secrets I sold. 
That's all of verse 1. So we have somebody who has uh, forbidden knowledge or secret knowledge, something not a lot of people know. And he says, I'll give it to you at a price, and that price is quite high. If he gets this money, he'll be living in old Monte Carlo. Daggers and contacts and bright shiny limos, I've got a watch that turns into a lifeboat, glimmering nightgowns, poisonous as cobras, a silencer under the heel of my shoe. What? Okay, back this up for a second. I think this was the line that sounded just like some of my favorite things from Sound of Music. And I still don't know what to make of that. <laughs> but is he just saying that he owns a lot of really cool things? He's got a watch that turns into a lifeboat. I'm not even sure that that's real, but it's pretty cool. Uh, he's got daggers and shiny limos and glimmering nightgowns and... Well, the nightgowns are as poisonous as cobras, maybe. I'm not sure about that. And he's got a silencer under the heel of his shoe. Not in the heel of his shoe, but under it. I'm not sure if that is an allusion to a... Like a suppressor for a firearm. Or if he's referencing that his heel, he can put it on someone's neck and silence them. I don't know. Because things just took a weird turn. Uh, it, it was grounded in our first verse, but our second verse goes a bit uh, science fiction-y. And I'm still trying to figure out what a poisonous nightgown is. The bridge. The elegance of China. They sent her to lie here on her back, but as she deeply moves me, she'd rather shoot me in my tracks. And while a middle Asian lady, she really came as no surprise, but I still did destroy her and I will smash halo of flies so because of who he is someone who deals in secrets and has a bunch of fancy gadgets maybe he kind of feels like a spy for some reason somebody was sent to disarm him to seduce and kill him, possibly, which is where I'm getting there. Uh, says that, they were, uh, that this lady was sent to lie on her back, but she'd rather shoot me in my tracks. Um, he says, it came as no surprise that I still did destroy her. I don't, and I will smash the halo of flies. I don't, under. I mean, I'm going to assume that he defended himself. She tried to shoot him, and maybe he shot her back. I don't understand the destroying part, though. That that's, seems way over the top for just killing, shooting someone. I crossed the ocean where no one would see, and I put a time bomb in your submarine. Goodbye to old friends, the secrets in hand. With phonied up papers and counterfeit plans, you will never understand. You know, he's really, really digging that one in. I don't understand. I don't think he's specifically talking to me, but there's so much of this song that just feels... It's outside my understanding, for sure. I, I, I don't know. I, I feel so off my game listening to this track. Uh, those are my thoughts. I, I don't know what to make of of this hit me up in the comments obviously i had a lot of questions here um let me know what's going on here you know if this track makes sense to you please explain it to me show me your perspective on it i am eager to hear about it uh, if you have any insight into these lyrics maybe they're directly referencing something maybe there was some pop culture film or or book that came out at the time that this was based off of i'm just trying to fit halo of flies is specifically selected as the title and yet it is one of the lines that makes the least amount of sense to me in this in the track verse the three verses i'm kind of getting but the bridge well only half of it kind of makes sense to me and the halo of flies is definitely the line that's thrown me for a loop um and what any of this has to do with the music maybe it doesn't a lot of prog rock kind of has music that doesn't line up necessarily with the lyrics 
There are certainly bands like Yes that specifically craft soundscapes to amplify the themes of the music, but a lot of prog rock music was also very experimental. We had brand new tech coming out at the time. We were combining genres with rock that hadn't been combined before. It was a time of experimentation. I don't necessarily expect every song to be cohesive, but I'm wondering if maybe there is some cohesion here that I missed. I don't know, just let just let me know. Educate me on this one. Um, above the comments, there's a description box in there. You can find a link to Linktree. You can find, oh, sorry, the link to Linktree takes you to this menu right here. It has links for everything related to the channel. You can find so much there. Uh, you can help support the channel in a variety of ways. Join a Discord server, email me, all sorts of stuff. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We'll explore another theme track and check out another special selection. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.